Hi, uh, my name is Nidhi, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Podcast. We're a predictive analytics company. We predict cargo flows from one place to the other for logistics companies and shipping companies, and we use machine learning and AI for this. Uh, my background has been in the logistics industry. I worked for DHL for the last 10 years uh, in Singapore, but all my roles were Asia-related, so business roles, management consulting, business development and strategy. And I built this company with my co-founder who has his expertise in machine learning and uh, product development, and he has a PhD in that space. Um, so yeah, we're also hiring. We're hiring for data science and uh, software developers. So <laughs> later on, if you're interested, happy to talk about it. I thought from a business perspective, you know, um, what, what can I talk about for developers or data scientists in this room? Um, and I think what I deal with, with with my team on a daily basis is connecting what the customer is asking for with what we are building and being that link in, in the middle. And we have internal discussions and team sessions where we try to get the, you know, the technical guys to think about what they are, are hearing from the customer. From that one meeting that they have or from the product and feature that they're developing, what are they understanding from the customer's perspective? And I think that is crucial to build a successful company. So that's what I can share some insights on. So first question from my side to you is, what do you think is the number one reasons why, reason why companies fail, especially startups? Finance. Sorry? Finance. Finance. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's the answer. I think finance, um, yeah, I mean, investment and funds are critical to, to pay, to survive. But the, the main reason why companies don't work out, even if they get funding, is because they don't understand what the customer really wanted. So there's no market need for what they're building. And I think as technical people, we're really proud of what we are building, right? Like we think this is the best thing possible. This is the greatest feature that I've developed. This is the best machine learning algorithm. It's so accurate. Um, but does the customer really want it? And a lot of times we think that if I need it, everyone else will need it. Let me just build it and customers will come. And that's not true. So if you think about it, like um, in terms of the product, the poor product is much lower than what you think in terms of the market. So it's really about understanding what we are doing and how is that fitting into the overall vision and objective of the company. Because if there's no customer, the company is not going to survive. And what you're building, no one's going to buy that. So there's no point in doing it. Um, so, you know, like someone said, the user and the customer demand is like the North Star. So that's what you have to look up for constantly. Have, have it at, at the back of your mind while you're building. And this is not just true for the whole company or the whole product, but for every single part of technology that you're working on. I think that is critical. Uh, so on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to really think about it. So one of the products that I think all of us love and use is an iPhone, right? So Apple is really, um, I see some smiles, so maybe some people use Android. <laughs> but, but, um, but you know, this is what Steve Jobs said. So he said that you start with the customer experience and then you build something. You can't start with the technology and then hope that there's going to be a buyer for that technology. So if you think about whatever Apple has built, it has not been the first company to do it. It has followed the second mover advantage policy. Um, iPhone was not the first phone. What Apple did really well is it really thought about what the consumer is liking about a phone, a, a, a mobile phone. What can I change about this experience or product? And how can I make this better, what the customer really wants? So there is a whole lot of R&D and a whole lot of technology, which is superior maybe to a lot of its competitors. But it's really about going at the customer first before you start building all of that. Um, so that, I think, is, is really critical in terms of having that customer first mindset uh, in what we're doing. So I have some examples in terms of how we can use it in our daily practice. So, is there anyone who's a UI UX designer here? Okay, so I mean, I'm from a more business background and I thought I'll just create a wireframe and I'll send it to a developer and that's about it. I know exactly what the customer wants and I'll, that, that's, that's what I think uh, you know, we should build. 
but I've recently sort of figured out that the UI UX design process is, is very, very critical to how your product should actually look and whether it satisfies the customer experience and the way customers use it. Because it really asks the question, okay, how are you going to use this? You know, it goes step by step. What are you really going to click from here? What do you expect to see? What is the, do you need this button or not? Do you need to see this data or not on the screen? And a lot of that, like this example is from Shopee's app. So the before and after, you know, it just visually, it's a lot uh, cleaner. It's a lot, you know, focused. Um, so, you know, you just have to go through that process of understanding what your customer wants. So that's just from a UI UX perspective. But in general, it's true for every single thing that we're doing. And there's a lot of ways how we can get that feedback from customers. So there are user interf interviews that we can do in corporate environments. There's things like net promoter score that's mentioned here where a customer is asked, are you going to recommend us to any other customer? And that's a very strong signal whether they like your product or company or not. Um, so that's how net promoter score is calculated. Are you going to be a promoter for us or not? So there's a lot of mechanisms you can have in the company to get customer feedback. Um, the other thing that's interesting is just to get data and then to do that analytics and data science behind it to really figure out if the customer is actually using what you're saying. So Google Analytics could be one. I think this is interesting because um, there was a time when fidget spinners were, were, were a rage, especially in the US. You know, they were, because I'm from shipping and logistics, there were containers full of fidget spinners which were being sent from China to the US. And I don't know what people were doing with it, but that was a reach. And you can see that spike. So if a company now wants to develop a fidget spinner, they're not going to get that spike suddenly because of that. You know, there, there needs to be data to show that the customer is actually requiring that. Um, and um, another, another thing that I really like is win-loss reviews. So every time a customer is won or a customer is lost in the company, what I think really makes sense is to get the whole team, including the technical guys, just sort of in a meeting and try and figure out why did we actually win this customer? Why did we lose this customer? Because there might be like one little feature that we, that the, we thought that the customer wanted, which you know, any developer could have built very easily. But we did not really think about what the customer really wanted. So it's always good to, after you win or lose a customer, take stock of what, what have we learned from this? and how as a team, including the technical people, we can do this better, make the product better. <coughs> so, um, you know, this, all the things, all, all the tips are really not just for the company, but for every single feature or every single machine learning algorithm that you're building. Um, and if we don't do that right, two things can happen. One is that we lose the customer, we don't get that right customer experience, and it's really expensive to lose a customer. For, for a startup especially. Uh, it's much easier to sort of gain the customer and retain the customer rather than to manage a lot of churn. Um, and secondly, as developers or as data scientists, we have to do the work again, right? So that we waste a lot of innovation dollars, we waste a lot of time and effort and redo all the work that, that we did uh, because it was not required by the customer. Um, a point to note is that this is different from being agile. Of course, we want to be agile. We don't want to build everything and then not think about iteration. So this is different from the iteration process. This is really about even the first thing that we build, we need to have the customer in mind before we start building it. It can obviously go through multiple iterations. So now that we have spoken with our customers, we understand what they want, we have a list of features, what do we do next? Right. Okay. Sorry? Okay. Plan. So usually what happens is when you talk to customers, you have a long list of features that the customer is going to tell you. So it's really, it's really important to plan and to prioritize what features you have. So simple things like, I don't know, in team meetings, do you have a prioritization? You might have tasks on Trello or, or something and you you know, even that list of tasks on Trello for that week or that day, there needs to be some kind of prioritization on what needs to be done first. Um, and, it, you know, simple things about how much effort does this task take or how much impact is it going to bring and stuff like that. Um, HubSpot actually has this interesting way of prioritization. They say that the customer um, sort of features or customer things come first, 
then come things that the team is interested in. The team priorities come next. And any individual priorities come after that. And that's sort of their, one of their values in, in a code of conduct book that they have. Um, so that's interesting. Um, a Y Combinator partner, he said, when you try to think about features that you're building, focus on um, you know, sort of those 10% which will get you 90% um, you know, of the, the, the impact. So the lower the, the effort, but the maximum the impact is what you should be focusing on. So less is sometimes more. So really plan, prioritize, uh, go through all those features, maybe with, you, you know, with your team, um, and think about where you, where, where you should spend your time on, really. Um, OK, so now we have the, we've spoken with the customers. We've, uh, we know what features to build. And we've built it, and we've got a customer. Is that it? What comes next? Sorry? More features. <laughs> yeah, more customers. Um, so the point I wanted to make here is that um, you know the entire customer journey is where you know each of us as a technical person is involved in. Every touch point to the customer matters. You know, so sort of the first phase where we're hunting for a customer, we're pitching, we're trying to get a subscription for the customer or getting them to buy. It's sort of like dating. You know, so you need to make a good impression. And once you get the customer on board, then it's a marriage. You can't just stop thinking about that person anymore, saying, I'm going to go after my next customer now. <laughs> so you have to try to retain it. You have to work on that relationship. You have to think about how we can expand from this customer. So in, in startups, there's this whole concept of land and expand. You know, and that's what investors like. That's what anyone wants, that you spend little dollars um, with the same customers and get more revenue with them. So um, what I've tried to say here is that through every, every process in the journey, there are things that all of us as technical people could do. So in terms of the hunting, yes, it is a salesperson's job. You know, the sales guy is the one going out there finding customers. What can the rest of us do? Um, comes back to our profiles, you know, the, you know, writing a blog or having that, you know, the, the customer might want to see who are the people working in this company, what kind of profiles do they have, you know, just having an updated LinkedIn. Or word of mouth is the best way to get customers. So when we go out and we say, we work for this company, and this is what we do, and this is what we like about it, that's the best way how we can get customers. Um, so everyone sort of is a salesperson. Um, and that's something we should not forget. Um, then in terms of pitching, a lot of times, the salesperson might not be the best person to do the demo. Of course, that's what his role is. But a lot of times, there must be a, a technical person who could support the salesperson. <coughs> And that, that's where we can play another role as well. Um, in terms of subscription, once we get the customer, again, the win-loss reviews that I talked about. And I think if this is something you can initiate in your company even, I think that sort of brings the whole team together and uh, gets all of the team members aligned on what gets us customers and focused on what we are doing. Um, the other thing we try to do is have a technical lead per customer. So not just a customer you know, sort of salesperson, but a success lead from a technical perspective. So that if there are any issues about that customer, that's the guy or, or girl who's focusing on that particular customer. Um, and then it's about retaining the customer, figuring out what they're liking about the product, what they're not liking, um, really fixing their issues as soon as possible. Um, not again forgetting about them and going after your new customers, but really thinking how do we get them to stay with us. Um, and then expanding with them in terms of more products, more users, uh, or more volume that they're spending. So, you know, like if you're using a product, every single touch point you have with that particular company or product is what you remember. Um, if the customer service guy did not really respond to your call, um, you know, the email that you got from the customer uh, got from the company is not really interesting or not really nice or polite. So everything that we do uh, matters. Every meeting that we attend with the customer, every phone call that we take with the customer, we need to be planned, um, even from a tech perspective. Um, so towards the tail, tail end, it was all about retention, right? So whose job is it to retain the customer? Everyone. 
Um, I have two examples here of companies um, who deliberately put the retention, yes, amongst everyone, but specifically amongst the technical teams. So there's Kayak. What they did, they had a red telephone line in the middle of the floor where the technical guys were, the developers were sitting. <laughs> and uh, every customer sort of query used to come to, the, to that call, uh, to that phone. So the developers were the one picking that up and hearing what the customer's problem is. The first time you hear, okay, this, is, this feature is not working or this bug is, is hitting when I, I'm opening this website, you're like, okay, fine, whatever. No, uh, let's, let's focus on what we're building. The, the second or the third time the same issue comes up from different customers, the developer would stop what they're doing, focus on fixing that issue for the customer. And they really started to think, what is the customer getting stopped at? And that's real. That's what they do. Um, Freshdesk, again, same policy. It is a customer support, support company. So uh, every single technical person or every single business person, even the CEO, um, is a customer support person in the company. Um, and what they realized is that the developers started figuring out that the features they've developed, the customer is actually using them for something else. Or, you know, they, 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 they started looking at them differently. So they started understanding why is the customer using our product and how are they using our product. And that's very important. Again, it's about getting that customer feedback, uh, fixing the issues, and trying to retain the customer. So um, customer issues should take priority over every single fancy new feature that you're building. And, um, you know, 90% of the customers would buy uh, your service again because of the customer service that you bring. Um, so I have five simple rules for driving uh, customer-driven driven software development. The first thing is that we should start thinking about how we can get involved in the customer support. Maybe two times a month, um, that's maybe not a lot. Um, and that applies to every single sort of level in the company, even to the leadership team. Um, every single person needs to talk to the customer and hear what the problems are. Um, so customer requests need to be handled ASAP. And um, you know, uh, every time when you're prioritizing what you are doing or creating your Trello plan or your sprints, think about what the customer's requests are. Um, a lot of times in sort of product meetings, there's no one from a customer perspective involved. So I think that's something that as the companies grow larger, we should think about getting a customer success person or a customer rep representative into those product meetings so that you know, that person is able to bring some feedback about whether this sprint is actually making sense from a customer perspective or not. Um, and then whenever you're working on features, think about what's the impact that this feature is going to bring. Um, and also, will it help to keep the customer or make the customer successful for our company? So simple things that I think all of us as technical people need to think about while we're developing the magical code that we are. Thank you.